Hey, Facebook, Wealth and Real Estate Group. This is John Crutchfield, Grab the Map Properties. And uh, this morning, I want to talk to you about my favorite way to fund real estate deals. Um, I know this is a popular topic, so I'm going to wait on a few people to pop in here. Um, just a real brief video, my favorite way to fund real estate deals. Yep. Uh, I know this is a popular question. Um, I see somebody popping in here. I'm going to try to shout you out if it shows me who you are. But uh, we're going to talk about my favorite way to fund real estate deals. And uh, first, I guess I'll tell you uh, what my portfolio looks like today. Um, just been really fortunate. Um Got a ton of rental properties. I got some Airbnbs. Um, I've got some storage units. Uh, I've got some commercial property. Uh, uh, you know, multiple, multiple millions of dollars of, of assets at this point. And I'm going to talk to you about my favorite way to fund real estate deals. Put your comment in below if you have a question on this live. Um, I'll answer that question. Uh, I've, I've funded deals so many ways, you know, I've got bank financing. Um, I've been crazy enough to use credit cards and cash advances and loans from friends and neighbors and people I don't even know in all kinds of parts of the country. Um, I've funded deals using hard money, private money. Uh, I've funded deals in all kinds of ways. But I'm going to tell you my favorite way to fund real estate deals. And here I go. Um, looks like some folks may be out doing their Saturday Saturday activities. Um, but somebody might watch it later. My favorite, favorite way to fund a real estate deal is to find a seller who doesn't need the money. Yes, I, I want to find somebody who does not need the money. Okay, what do you mean by that? I want to find somebody who owns a property and maybe they're just tired of running the property. Maybe the tenant's not paying them rent. Maybe the property needs work and it's distressed. Um, I want to find somebody who doesn't need the money, but is just tired of dealing with the asset. Yes, Tim, Tim Vitale. Uh, my favorite way to fund the deal is to offer to send that seller a payment every single month in exchange for me taking on the, the work that needs to be done to the property, for me taking on the stress of that property, for me paying the taxes, the insurance, and, and everything, as long as I get the deed to the property. What I'll do is I'll start sending that seller a monthly payment. Let's just say it's $1,000 a month. And he will get that payment without fail. I've got these payments set up in my automatic billing system. And I just automatically send them a check every month. Uh, the, the attorney does all of the paperwork. My attorney does all of the, the, uh, the, the owner financing is what we call this, or seller financing documents. He gets a promissory note. I get the deed, so it's not a rent-to-own situation. And I now own the property and that seller is getting a check every single month. Now, I have a question for those of you that might watch this later. Where do you think I'm getting the money to pay this seller every single month? You're right. I'm going to put a tenant in the property and that tenant is going to be paying me rent and I'm going to take some of that money and pay the seller. Okay. So, uh, you might say, well, why would a seller do this? Remember, I told you, I'm looking for a seller who has a headache or is just tired of managing their property and they don't need the money. Uh, there's a lot of older sellers who may just want income. They don't have to be older, but they just may want a monthly check that's consistent and I'm, a, I'm that solution for them. Uh, there might be sellers that are just tired and they want to have a note left to their kids so their kids are getting monthly income. Those are uh, typical sellers that I look for. So if I find a seller that starts to hint like they may not need the money, that's my new best friend. 
right? I'm starting to build a relationship with them and trying to see how I can solve a headache from them. Um, I've used this strategy with properties from $10,000 to over a million dollars. Um, I actually have a seller finance note right now for over a million dollars, okay? So these this strategy works on, on smaller properties and larger properties. Tim Vitale asks, what terms are you targeting with seller finance? Obviously, it's a wide open book, but is there a general rule of thumb you try to shoot for? Um, Tim, this is very important to me because I see this being posted in a lot of groups. Um, I ask the seller what they need. I'm listening to the seller to try to figure out what they need. Okay. Now, obviously, I want my deal to cash flow. I don't want to do a deal that um, where I'm having to come out of pocket at the end of the month and I'm paying the seller more than I'm going to receive in rent. Usually, I'm not going to do that. But I ask the seller, why are they selling? I ask them, what type of monthly payments are they currently getting? And most of the time, I try to figure that out. I just made an offer a couple of weeks ago on a $2.8 million property. And before I made him that offer, he was interested in seller financing, but I already kind of knew what his monthly income was going to be based on the rents that he was getting. Um, I knew what his income was going to be based on uh, the taxes on the property, the insurance, what I thought the maintenance expenses might be. And so what I did was I made him an offer where his monthly payment that he was getting doing all of the work of collecting from the tenants and doing the maintenance was actually the same. Right. So I don't want his income to go down. I want his headache to go down. Right. Um, so I'm really asking the seller, what do you need? How much money do you need? Um, what would solve your problem? And I'll give an example of a deal that I recently got closed. There was a seller that um, he, he had income coming in on the property, but there was some maintenance items that were needing to be done. The city actually was just hassling him. They were, they were telling him that he needed to do the work immediately or they were going to shut the property down. And he said, I just need a monthly payment that covers my bank payment, right? I just need a monthly payment. And he had another bank loan on a restaurant, right? He had another bank loan on a restaurant for $459. He just wanted the property to cover that bank loan. And so I immediately told him, if I could set it up where you get that payment made, would you sell me this property? And that is my favorite by hands way down. I see some people trickling in here. Hey, y'all, put some comments below if you have questions. What we're talking about is my favorite way to fund real estate deals. My favorite way, hands down, is seller financing, getting the seller to actually sell me their property without with little money down or with no money down. Or sometimes I put big money down if I'm getting a great deal, okay? Um, so if you have questions about this, I'm going to hang out here for a minute. Um, I'm going to give another example of a seller finance type of transaction. OK, and I'm going to use whole numbers. OK, um, a seller puts a sign in his yard that says for sale by owner. Those are my favorite. Why? Because there's no realtor in the middle to like tell me that a seller won't accept something that they haven't even asked them about. Um he puts a sign in the yard and he says for sale by owner. I call that sign and I say, hey, seller, how much do you want for your property? And he says, $200,000. I don't say, would you sell it for 100,000, right? That's, that seems to be what we're seeing a lot right now is everybody thinks you have to get a property at a discount or a deal. That's not my next question. My next question to Mr. Seller is, how much income is currently coming in on the property, right? Um, I got to know if it's generating income because that's going to tell me if it's causing pain for the seller or if it's actually pleasure for the seller. Mr. Seller says, right now I've got all the property rented. There's four tenants in the property and they pay me on time every month. They pay me $2,000 a month. So I've got a property for $200,000 purchase price making $2,000 a month in rent. Mr. Seller's getting his money on time. 
And so my next question is still not, will you sell me your property at a discount? My next question is, what are you going to do with the money, Mr. Seller? No, you can't ask him like you're snobby or like you're trying to get in their business. Um, the way I'm going to ask the seller this question is, hey, man, I wish I had a property that was two, that was for sale for two hundred thousand um, dollars. What would you do with the money? You know, what would you do the money if you got it? The seller might say, oh, I'm going to invest it in something else. Hmm. Or they might say that's none of your business. And I would say, well, you know, I was actually thinking about, you know, if I had two hundred thousand dollars, I might go on a trip to Australia. Right. You're just trying to break the ice and figure out what they're going to do with the money. I've had sellers tell me that they want to take trips. I've had sellers tell me that they want to pay off student loans. I've had sellers tell me that they just want to have it sitting in a bank account to look at. All of that is giving me clues as to whether or not this is a seller who does not need the money. Now, if a seller needs two hundred thousand dollars immediately because they have another debt they have to pay or they have something else that they need them the whole complete money for right away. That's not my ideal seller. That's not who I'm looking for. I'm looking for the guy who says, oh, I don't know. I might invest it in somebody at something else. And that's my plug to say, well, what if I could pay you 8% or 6% or 4% or whatever? Or I might ask them, what kind of return are you looking for on your money if you invest it somewhere else? I'm looking to see if there's a way that I can offer them that return in exchange for them financing the property. I see some folks coming in here. Ramon Gary says, I don't want his income to go down. I want his headache to go down. Man, look, if we can ask the seller what they are really trying to accomplish, we need to find out what are they really trying to accomplish. Most people do not want the money. Most people want what the money will do for them, right? If I list a property for sale right now, it's not because I want $100,000 to sit and look at. It's because I might need the $100,000 to pay property taxes, or I might need $100,000 to do a remodel on my house, or I might need the $100,000 to invest in cryptocurrency. Whatever the need is, that's what I'm trying to find out. And believe it or not, there are folks who sell property who do not need the money, right? They don't have a purpose or an intention. And those are the people that I love to find. Um, I love to talk to them and offer them something that they may not have thought about. They may have an asset right now that's producing little or no income or all the income. And I may be able to take away the property insurance headache the maintenance headache. I may be able to take away the management of the tenants collecting the rent. I may be able to take away the headache of the inspections that the city does or whatever other headache they might express if they are willing to take a monthly payment and finance the rest of the property to me. Um, I currently probably pay over 15 sellers this way, multiple millions of dollars. Um, and here's another clue. Because these people also don't need the money, and if you show and demonstrate a fidelity, a, a commitment to what you said you would do and you're making these payments on time, these people have often come back and been private lenders with additional capital, okay? I can count every single one of my private lenders, I mean, has been one of my people that have seller financed me something. OK, so these are this is a good pool of place to find people who don't need the money. Now, Chris Garrison is watching and he says, what about the obstacle of the overall price? All right. I don't like these these people who are saying price doesn't matter um, because you'll you can pay anything for the property if the seller will finance it for you. OK, I don't I don't like that. But what's true is. The price is not as important as the terms, okay? The terms that you're getting, what you're going to be paying on a monthly basis, what your interest rate is, um, how much income you think you're going to be able to get the property to produce, that is more important than what you're paying 
for the property, okay? Now, that said, obviously, uh, you don't wanna overpay for a property if you're not gonna be able to get the income to produce to where it'll pay for itself, or if the property is, is not a good property, or if it needs more renovations than you're gonna be able to do. There's so many other things to talk about with that question. Um, but there are ways to structure things uh, where the price is not the most important factor. And I'm gonna answer this question with an actual example, Chris Garrison, okay? I might be listening to John Crutchfield and John Crutchfield might say, you really need to try to get your properties for 50% on the dollar. That's generally my target. 50% on the dollar of what I think it'll be worth after I fix it up. That's what I look for with my real estate deals. Okay. Now, if somebody has a property that is not distressed, it's fixed up, there's nothing wrong with it. The income is strong. Why would they sell that property to you for 50% on the dollar? Right. They have really no incentive to do so. So what seller financing allows me to do is to often offer them exactly what they're asking for the property. I'll have I'll share another example. I've got a guy, he had five houses in Verona, Mississippi. He didn't really want them anymore. He didn't like the city of Verona. He didn't like some of the politics going on. Um, he just didn't like it. The properties were all rented, but they were kind of distressed and he hadn't fixed them up in a while. He just wanted to give up on them. He was tired of them. He said for five properties, I want $250,000 and for five properties, I just want to keep my income right around $2,500 a month. I'll seller finance them to you, okay? But I want exactly the price that I'm asking for. I don't want anything lower. And so what I was able to do without arguing or negotiating is to say, yes, I'll pay you the $250,000 Yes, I'll pay you $2,500 a month, but in exchange, I got no money down, okay? That seller actually brought funds to closing. He paid closing cost, okay? I didn't have to bring any money to closing, okay? And in exchange, he offered me 0% interest, okay? So I offered him his full price, but every single payment I make of $2,500 a month is coming off of that principal balance. Where can you get a zero interest loan? Where can you borrow $250,000 with properties producing three dollars to $4,000 of income for no money down from a seller who doesn't need the money, right? And from a seller who's flexible on the terms that they're willing to offer to get rid of a property, okay? So... Hey, I see there's five people watching. We're talking about my favorite way to fund real estate deals. Um, if you've got questions about this, please post them now because I'm going to I'm going to be here for another four minutes. OK, um, how to fund real estate deals. My favorite way. OK, favorite, absolute favorite way is to have the seller pay, um, have the seller fund the deal. Right you can actually ask the seller to finance the property to you just like the seller was a bank. Instead of having to go to Renaissance Bank or Community Bank or Bank of America, if you were crazy enough to try to ask them for money um, for real estate property, uh, instead of having to go to them, you can ask the seller to be the bank on your behalf. It's my hands down favorite way to do this. Um, it's my favorite way to, to borrow. It's my favorite way to, to hedge against the banks possibly doing something funky. Um, there's a reason that I've got over three to four or five million dollars in seller finance notes. My notes are structured in a way where my sellers cannot call those notes. My sellers cannot say, hey, John, I need you to pay me off right now. OK, now what I do do is I do call these sellers probably every six months and say, hey, I'll offer you half of the. Sorry about that. Hey, I'll offer you half of the amount of the note if you'll let it sell it early, if you'll just let me pay you off early. Um, but when COVID happened and everybody was freaking out because they didn't know if their rent was going to come in, they didn't know if they were going to be able to make their bank payments. Um, I was able to first of all, I didn't have to miss a single payment for my seller finance notes. I didn't pay anybody late, but I was able to rely on the fact that 
probably 30 to 40 percent of my portfolio is direct to seller financing. It's not with the banks. Right. Do you think it's going to be easier? And actually, it turned out to be easier to deal with banks this time. But do you think it's going to be easier to call an individual and say, hey, I'm going to have to pay you 30 days late? Or do you think it's going to be easier to call Bank of America and tell them I'm going to have to pay 30 days late? You're worried about your credit report. You're worried about not being able to borrow future money. You're worried about uh, the community and people saying you're late on your bills, all these things. A lot easier to talk to an individual, right? Um, A lot of these notes that you're signing for real estate property actually say in them that the bank can call the note, Yes, when you sign that note, it says if there's an economic emergency or if the bank is failing, that the bank can ask you for that entire payment in full right away. And you have to come up with the money. But with seller finance notes, you can put in them whatever you want. And I always try to structure mine where sellers cannot do that. Right. Um, Rarely do I do that. So that's my favorite way to fund real estate deals. I appreciate you all for jumping on here. Um, For those of you that watch this video after the fact, post your questions or comments below and somebody in the Wealth and Real Estate group will uh, try to answer them. Uh, Don't forget that you should be telling your friends about this group. Um, We're trying to get to 2000 members before the end of the year. Well, we're over 400 now, so it's going strong. And uh, I know that uh, you're helping somebody uh, in their business. We're trying to help you as well. You're helping us. Let's help each other. Wealth and Real Estate group. Uh, Thanks for jumping on, y'all. And don't just look at it. Grab the map.